So I've been building a lot more minimal APIs recently, not only for myself, but for some of my clients too. And what I wanted to do in this video was to set myself a challenge. I tend to use the same frameworks over and over again. I've been using a lot of Django and Django REST framework. But what I really wanted to do is just see how the actual basics and the core of building that API fits together, regardless of what framework you're using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself an about an hour and I'm going to say I need to have a minimal API up and working on my local machine that accepts product data that I can push in and will give me an endpoint to display it out. So um, let's get going and see how I get on. So for those of you that have watched any of my more recent live streams, you're probably expecting to see Sanic here, but that's not the case. I really wanted to try AIO HTTP because of the client that I use quite a lot. I wanted to try the server version. So this is what we're gonna go with. The Sanic video will come, don't worry. Very similar to this and I, I really like both. So as a self-taught developer and content creator, I have certain skills that I really need to keep on top of. And that's why I really like the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant. So Brilliant has thousands of lessons available for you across math, science, and the ones that I like the most, computer science, as these ones really help plug the bits of knowledge that I'm missing from being self-taught. So I didn't get a college education, so I find that doing just a little bit of this every day really helps fill in the bits of information that I'm missing. It's all done interactively and hands-on as well, so you can really feel like you're actually doing something and learning. Uh, just like if you're trying to write some new code, you have to write code to learn code. It's the same principle that we're all familiar with. In fact, the ones that I'm doing at the moment I really like are the algorithm lessons because you can really see and feel how the algorithm works interactively and you can follow it all through. Helps visualize it in your mind and it makes a lot more sense that way. So if this sounds interesting to you, and I think you guys will like it, you can get started for free by going to brilliant.org slash John Watson Rooney or clicking on the link in the description below. And the first 200 people that do so will also get 20% off an annual subscription. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the documentation and we're basically going to copy out the first few bits. So we're looking at how to actually return a JSON response uh, from this uh, specific web server. So I'm going to go ahead and do if name is equal to main and I'm going to put the web.run app and then create the app instance here so we can actually work with it. The first function that I created, I just wanted to, to return some data. You can see we do the return JSON data there. So it starts to run and we have it running on our local host port 8080. When I run it, we get 404 not found. And that's where the first interesting part about this uh, framework comes up. Now, generally there's like two different ways that you can do your roots within Python applications or, or any language that you're learning in. The first one is to use the decorator, which you see very common in Flask. And the second one is to actually create all your handler functions and then add the roots in to the application at the end. Now I don't really use this one that much, but I do quite like it because it gives you a nice neat list of all your endpoints at the end of your file or in a separate file if you're running it that way. And I think that's quite useful and I do enjoy it. So after I added in the get request, the web.get, so this is a get request on the, um, the root endpoint, we actually do get the test data back, uh, which is exactly what I was hoping for. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a new function to actually be able to create a new product and add it to our database, which we're going to do, uh, add the model in in a minute. So this function, again, we're going to take the uh, request object from it and we're going to just return it out into the JSON response and see and just check what we're actually doing is, is right. So to test out the posting, I'm going to be using curl. I'm going to try and just post some arbitrary data to my endpoint here, my API, just to make sure that I've got it working right how I want it to. So we can see that I got method not allowed and that's because I didn't add this to my root. So we need to add web.post on the same uh, root endpoint here to actually send it to our create product function. Um, when I run this again, and then go back to my terminal and try and send the same data over. You can see that we get the response back, the success, and then the information that I sent to it, the dummy information that I sent via curl. So we can see then by looking at the create product function, that I am actually getting the JSON from the request. Now this is quite ni nice, neat and tidy. And I'm just testing here to actually make sure that I can, I, and where I can work with the JSON data uh, because I'm gonna need to do that when it comes to creating the um, actual 
uh, model and the and the putting the data into our database. So speaking of the database, we're gonna use Tortoise ORM. I've done a video on this recently. I actually really like it, especially for this sort of application. It's very uh, Django-esque in its models and it's um, really easy and simple to use. It's also fully async, even with SQLite, which means it's great for these sort of applications. I'm gonna create a new models file here and we're gonna basically do what we did just a minute ago with AIOHTTP and we're gonna copy all the demo code because why not? So there we go, that's our user model. We are actually gonna use that uh, in this basic example, but I'm gonna create a new model here called product. Uh, and we're going to add in the fields that we need to actually uh, put in this information. I'm just going to have the name, the ASIN and the price because this is simulating maybe storing some product information. Coming back to the documentation, we look at how we would actually uh, integrate, integrate this. We need to import our model that we've created from our models file. Uh, it recommends using some logging, which I'm going to do as well. Um, you don't necessarily need this, but I find it easier to sort of work out what's going on. We also need to register uh, with Tortoise and it has uh, all built in with the contrib to register with AIO HTTP, another reason why this ORM is really cool. Let me just copy and paste it in. Now we are using an in-memory database in this case, but if you wanted to make this persistent, you just change that um, colon memory to the name of your database and it will store it in the file. In this instance, I didn't feel like doing that because I was just trying to get a feel for the framework and how it's gonna work. Um, so I just added some comments in for myself as well so I know what I'm doing. Ideally, the roots here you would abstract out, I think, into another file and import them in just to make it a bit neater and tidier. But this is only a very small program so there's no need at the moment, it's only like 40 lines of code. So now we want to work out how we're going to get the information back out of our database and we can just do product.all to get all of the information and then put it into our JSON response here. But I'm going to come across an, an error once we um, get a bit further down the line and that's because but this is just model data, it's not serial into JSON at the moment so we're going to need to correct that. Notice it's an async function so we need to wait again here. Moving on to the creating one, I'm going to create a new product using again await and product.create. Then we can put in the information that we get from the request. Always reference the documentation, that's so useful. Right here I was half expecting to see something like product.save or something like that, but it doesn't need that. This product.create will do it for us anyway. So we can actually just go ahead and return out the string representation of the product that we just created. So when we looked at the models file, you have this uh, the DEF uh, double on the dunder string, which is just how it's a method of showing that data out. So this is where you can see I'm just exploring all of the um, logging, the red text here that I've got. I didn't really go into this too much. It did seem to work as it was anyway. So I just carried on going through. I would recommend generally speaking for small applications, SQLite's probably fine, but if you want to move up, definitely check out Postgres. So you can see that I've got a success here, and as I've after I've posted and I got that success, I've tried to visit the endpoint to get the data back, and this is where I realized that the product is not JSON serializable, and that's uh, because we can't just take the model data. So we need to create a new function in our model to actually make it serializable, I'm going to do it in the model in this case, just going to do dot, uh, two dict because this is the only model that I'm going to do this on. If you've ever used Django REST framework, you'll know all about serializers. Um, and when I correct myself here, I'd actually make this a dictionary, please, thank you. Because a Python dictionary is, of course, JSON serializable, so we can then send it our data to this function, which is going to turn it into something that can be turned into JSON and then returned out of our endpoint. Again, in memory database, so we need to post that information back. And we're still getting this uh, internal server error. So I go back and I have a look and we can see that I've not actually put in my two dict. Uh, and I'm also gonna make another mistake here of two JSON. Uh, and then we're going to forget that this is actually list comprehension and we don't put the square brackets around it so we get really confused. So I'm just gonna skip through that and get to the point where I figured that all that out. 
and uh, to its working. So let's go. Okay, so that took way too long to figure out and I'll never tell you exactly how long because um, yeah, uh, but you can see now we're actually returning a list of every item that's in our dictionary. I know that I'm sending basically the same data, but you can see the difference in the price. So this is the sort of the read part done. Now what we don't have is we don't have any pagination. Um, that's going to be slightly more more of a complex example and outside of the scope for this. I just wanted to make sure I could get the data back. What I wanted to do then is I quite like to have a landing page for um, my APIs just as a kind of like this is what it is and what it does type of thing. This is different to the actual API documentation because I would never, this, this API would never be useful to use for anyone except myself. So I wouldn't bother with the full API docs. I just want to have an a index template uh, HTML that I can just give myself a few bits of information of what's going on. So I did find that there is AIO HTTP Ginger 2 template, very familiar with Ginger 2 templates. Uh, they are uh, used in Flask and lots of other things. So I'm going to install that package and I'm going to look through the documentation of how to actually set that up. Looks fairly straightforward. We can just put this information in and import what we need and uh, go from there. I'm going to update the endpoints now and I'm going to add in my index function which is going to be the one I want to return the template with. So I've moved the product API actually off to slash products. So this isn't going to be a async function. This is just going to be a standard one. All I want it to do is just return this template. I'm not even going to be sending any data to it in this case. So I did have some issues by getting the um, directory for templates wrong a few times. Uh, so once I fixed that, uh, it actually was fine. Well, this took an embarrassingly long time to figure out. So now that I've worked out that I had the uh, file path the directory wrong. Uh, I've headed over to Bulma just to make my actual uh, index file a tiny bit nicer. You know, just come here and you can copy the starter template, stick that in and change a couple of things just so it's just a few bits differently. Now you can um, use things like data tables and grid.js to create yourself a nice JavaScript table within your index HTML if you want to. I didn't do that with this one, although it is an option because you can just point it to your endpoint um, and then go ahead and grab that data from there and display it all neatly on it in a table on your index. But for me, this API is just a like a, an in and an out. It's a means to an end. It's going to take data that I'm going to push in from all different places. Then I'm going to be able to save it there and pull it out when I need it. So we're not going to go into a table any further. I'm just updating my curl so I can post new data because obviously it's in memory database. Just checking that it's all still working. There we go. You can see all the different entries that I've created through posting directly to my API. So I've managed to claw something together in about a half an hour, 40 minutes, I suppose, of working. And um, there's a couple of points that I really want you to take away from this. And the first one is that it doesn't matter what framework you're using. You need to know all the underlying parts and how it works, the routes, the models, all of that stuff. You need to understand it, requests and responses. It doesn't matter what framework you're using into, in that case until you get there. And that's why for people that are starting now, I would recommend Flask. It gives you that really good compromise of being able to let you build your own stuff if you want to or use other people's stuff if you're not quite there yet. So that's what that would be my recommendation. This sort of API, really quite good to, to practice and learn with building and you can push data in that you've web scraped for example into it and save it and they're quite easy to deploy so if you've enjoyed this one i think you're going to like this video here too which is going to be talking about getting data that you might want to push into a minimal api that you've made like this one